Community Healthcare Center of Wichita Falls, Texas, is a product of an organized community effort that began in 1992 to develop a healthcare facility for the underserved. In 1994, those doors opened to begin serving residents of North Central Texas. From its modest beginning in a 3,800 square foot modular building, the center has now grown to over 44,000 square feet. Services offered throughout our clinics are family medicine, pediatrics, obstetrics, behavioral health counseling, and family dentistry. Our medical and dental care is also supported by lab, x-ray, and pharmacy. In 2009, our leadership and board of directors saw a definite need for primary preventive medical care with the Wichita Falls Housing Authority. A temporary clinic opened on site at the Housing Authority, but then work began on making a permanent home for this clinic. The permanent site, Community Health Care Center's War Res Medical Clinic was opened in 2010 and serves the Wichita Falls Housing Authority and surrounding neighborhood residents. Once we were given the grant, we had three months to be up and running and there's no way you can get a building up and going in three months. So the Public Housing Authority offered us an apartment to work out of. For one year, we saw patients in this small apartment and it was actually kind of a fun time for us because you would go over and patients would be just sitting out on the porch and there was a screen door into the apartments. In July of 2010, we were able to actually open our Juarez clinic and we began seeing patients over there. We have a beautiful facility over there that right now has a, one provider, a nurse, a front desk person who can also handle medical records. We have a billing person over there and a, an MA who can also do lab. Community Healthcare's Juarez Medical Clinic has served over 7,000 patients and had over 27,000 encounters. In 2015, the clinic served over 1,500 patients. The clinic's medical staff and care teams are about changing lives and making differences in chronic illnesses, childhood development, and most of all, giving those patients the opportunity to seek medical care without barriers. The patients that come over to Juarez, a lot of them have um, don't have access to transportation. Um, the, being where the clinic is located, they are able to get there by walking, therefore they come to their appointments. Being a clinic in a public housing area, they are their, their access is so much better that they come in and they're compliant with their medications and they're compliant with coming to get their labs drawn so we can follow things like diabetes and hypertension and they know that us being there, that we care about their medical conditions, therefore in turn, they're more compliant and willing to work with us. The Juarez Medical Clinic is very convenient to the residents of the Wichita Falls Housing Authority. It's really more of a blessing to our residents. I've referred many residents there without insurance and they were able to be seen and seen at a discounted rate on the sliding scale. So that was very convenient for our residents as well. Um, it's just, we really love having the Juarez Clinic. We're very unique because we are such a, a small housing authority, but there aren't many housing authorities that have an actual fully functioning health clinic on property and on site. And here in Wichita Falls, where transportation is a huge barrier for people, that is, a, that is just a huge um, convenience and help. Um, like I said, many people, they actually, they just walk to the clinic or if their children have an appointment, they can get right off the, the bus at the bus stop and they can walk together to their doctor's appointment. So um, we really were very grateful to the Community Health Care Center for having the Juarez Clinic on our property. Um, and we just look forward to many more partnerships ahead. Please describe how you collaborate with your local public housing authority. Okay, um, our local public housing authority is actually one of our uh, greatest partners uh, in this area. Um, we uh, have two uh, medical sites uh, for our health center and one dental site. Um, and one of the uh, medical sites is uh, literally uh, embedded in the campus of the public housing authority. And uh, 
Uh, I mean, I think it's probably the only business within uh, the uh, campus of the, uh, that particular uh, public housing authority site. Um, and then our other uh, main site, uh, which is across the street from our dental site, is uh, just down the road from the other campus. So um, everything to our immediate, uh, or I say most everything to our immediate east um, is the public housing authority. So I would definitely say by by proximity, we are uh, uh, very, very close to our public housing authority. But even more than that, it's the you know the culture, it's the missions of the organizations. You have a public housing authority um, whose mission it is to provide uh, affordable housing to uh, um, the uh, to the vulnerable, um, and then you have us, uh, the uh, the health center, whose mission it is to provide health care to the vulnerable. So uh, we're serving the same population, and that. Of course, that correlation between uh, having uh, affordable and adequate housing and uh, having good health is uh, a direct correlation. Okay. What motivated the partnership for the collaboration? Um, well, years ago, um, frankly, uh, before I even started working here, I um, was uh, working with the uh, former executive director of this health center. Um, and uh, it was right after I had gotten a uh, public housing primary care uh, grant for the health center that I was at in Waco, Texas. And uh, um, in speaking with the uh, uh, executive director of this health center at the time, I was sharing with her just uh, what an incredible um, uh, advantage it was to be able to to have that uh, funding source to be able to target uh, being able to serve um, a, a large group of folks. Uh, and then public housing in itself um, is unique. There are unique um, uh, health uh, disparities um, that uh, are in a public housing environment. And so um, my predecessor here at this health center uh, um, you know, I guess heeded the word and uh, um, herself went uh, after being able to uh, uh, get uh, directed uh, resources, the grant money uh, related to that. So um, it, was, it was very much related to being able to serve that particularly underserved, the special population, um, and, uh, and being able to uh, get the resources to do it. Okay. What immediate benefits have you seen as a result of your partnership? Um, well, you know, it's interesting, um, you know, so the, it's the health disparities uh, have been reduced. So, so there's greater access to and lower disparities in the provision of primary health care services to the, uh, the special population that is public housing primary care um, residents. So, um, um, and, and those, those data is not just me blowing smoke, it's just the reality you can look at uh, um, our uh, uh, UDS uh, measures, our, our QA measures, and, uh, and you can see that uh, we do extraordinarily well um, with all of our QA measures across the board, universally, um, but you can see it um, you know, coming out in the uh, um, public housing primary care um, quality measures as well. What are some of the challenges and strengths of your partnership? Uh, a two-part question. It's listed as one, but there's two parts to that. So let's let's talk about the strengths. Um, um, and I'll come back to on the strengths is proximity. Uh, I don't know how we could be more proximate, uh, how we could be better situated to be able to serve uh, the vast majority of the public housing primary care residents uh, in our community. Um, and, and then secondarily, it's those, those missions. Um, you know, the, the Housing Authority, once again, is there to, to meet the mission of providing affordable housing to uh, um, a, a group of uh, very vulnerable people. Um, and here we are, uh, immediately proximate, um, and we have uh, a mission of providing um, high-quality primary health care services to the vulnerable. So um, those two factors, I think, in particular, um, really uh, um, are the the, the, the strengths uh, of the relationship we have. I should also say, I mean, of course, every, every health center that is a public housing primary care grantee um, needs to have, should have, it's not just required to have, but should have a, a member of the public housing primary care, uh, public housing community on their uh, board of directors of the health center. And we have that, and we have a very, a very good one, uh, a member, if you will, of the um, administration of the public housing primary care uh, um, authority here um, in, um, in our region. So um, three strengths that I can think of right off the bat. Challenges, you know, the challenges are not as pronounced uh, specifically in our community um, as they are for 
uh, the entire state. I mean, I think the, the biggest issue is having resources to be able to serve the vulnerable. And clearly, the uh, residents of public housing uh, qualify as vulnerable, and we have a state that uh, is choosing not to expand Medicaid, um, is choosing not to close the gap in coverage. And of course, there's a direct correlation between uh, being having having um, you know, access to uh, quality of care and uh, and then having essentially a good quality of life. Um, and so I think the greatest challenge is tied to um, essentially living in a state that's not expanding Medicaid and that would unquestionably serve um, a lot more of the public housing residents than uh, that, what we currently have available to us.